All right, welcome back to the NIA interactive tutorial on how to develop websites using the CMS Made Simple Content Management System platform. So when we left off last time, we we're customizing the templates that came from the theme scenes, and we're going to do something about this menu up here. So this is the menu that came with the theme. Of course, it has a home, it has features, which we're not using, has price, which we're not using, has all these things that we're not even using. And as well as it has this little shopping cart, we're not even doing a shopping cart and a sign up and all that. So how do we then customize this area here? So let's go back to the back end and we're going to go to the design manager and look at the templates again. Now, normally we would go to the home or the main template, uh, but remember we moved all the header stuff, which includes the logo and the navigation bar up here to the template called Favison header. So here we are to the header. A template and here we can really take a deep dive into what the actual code looks like for uh, the navigation bar and that's really what we're concerned about right now for this session uh, so here we have this div that sets it up collapse nav bar collapse offset and then this uh, unordered list uh, which is the nav nav bar unordered list and then these list items and the anchors here the hyper references so this is the way that they look and we're going to have to convert this now what we want obviously to do is we can one thing you can do right now is we can just change each one of these individually and say this is going to be home and then the next page will be the next page uh, we can do those individually but then the problem with that is it doesn't make it easy for the client and uh, doesn't it means that we can't really develop very quickly because we have to go back and make these changes each time we want this to be automated we want this to happen in kind of an automated way all right so how do we do that how can we do that so that's what we're going to dive into uh, uh, into right now so let's go back into the admin area again we're going to keep this open for now we're going to open up another tab inside of the admin area and we're going to stick to the design manager inside of layout and we're going to create a new template. This template, however, is not going to be a page template. It's not going to be a core, either page or... This is going to be a menu or navigator template. So we're going to use the navigator navigation template here. And you see there's a few other kinds. But we're going with navigator navigation. And we'll submit that. And we'll call this one... Davis on top nav bar. So this will be the top navigation bar, and it's already set up with the design. So, um, and here, this comes, this comes built in, this comes out of the box with CMS Made Simple. It has a way to, to set up your navigation so that it comes out right out of the box, and it can be automated. Your top navigation or even a side navigation can be automated. So let's save this now. And this is a uh, navigator. And the name of this is Favison Tap Nav Bar. So we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to replace this here, starting from the ULs. We're gonna not gonna leader, we're gonna cut it. And we're gonna do navigator. And the template we're gonna use is Favison Top Nav Bar. And then we are going to save the header. And by doing this header, by the way, it impacts the home page and the main pages as well. And we want to make sure we named it both correctly. Here's Favison, space top nav bar. So let's refresh the page and see what happens. All right, so we have here all the pages that we saw on the original website on the original site before we switched over the template here are all the individual pages that exist inside of this system that exists let's go back to the navigation real quick if we go to the content content manager and look at the pages all of these pages here are represented so this is now a dynamic list uh, so this is working functionally in terms of showing the list, but this is not looking the way we want it to look. Uh, but nonetheless, it is working fully functionally. So this is great in some respect. Now we just got to try to fix it up and make it look the way we want. So how do we do that? What's the mix there? So we're going to go back to the design manager and go back to the top nav bar. And now what we need to do is code, fix this code so that it looks like the code that we actually want to use. All right, so what I usually do is then just paste the code in another uh, app, which is over here. Uh, Open this up in, uh, in Bluefish, and that way I can have full access to it. So we didn't include the div here. What we have is this UL, 
and then we have these LIs. So let's just look to see what it does first. Uh, the UL, first of all, has a class. This one does not. And then we're just going to grab these two lines here. And we're going to see if we can work them into here. So what we need to do is to have this the code from here match the code that we have um, in the original. So we'll start with that. And there we already now have this. Uh, the UL is better because the, it has a matching class. And then is a, as you can see here with the Smarty code, this is the for each. This is where the loop begins. And with this loop then, it, it will create each individual listing or each individual li so what uh, and then the way that the uh, each of them each of the li's come out and look is down here this is the regular item we're not looking at the separators or some of the other uh, the section headers but the regular items it, it does li and then a class and that's li class as defined further up here and then um, uh, and then it has the uh, anchor and then the class here. So what we need to do is we need to make sure this class matches the class that is actually on the rest of the site. So here the class for each li is nav item. So we could actually, let's see how what these looks here. So this we could actually include nav item there. The problem is that when you have a drop down menu, it looks a little bit different. It's nav item and then they add on sub menu drop down menu. So we need this to dynamic. We can't just put nav item here we have to dynamically create it so the li has to be nav item so here where it's defining is making these statements and defining these fields uh, we're going to change this here the original uh, li class is going to be nav item and that's it uh, this one is for the first child this particular template doesn't have a uh, a unique one for the first job. We're going to do that. And then current, if it's current, we can have it show up as active. In other words, if, if it's on the page, on you know, this particular page, and that's it. Uh, so we have that. But in, right now we have then uh, one of the most important uh, things, which is that the LI is showing up properly. And that is with nav item. Okay, so now this is going to show up as nav item. There's some more things we're going to have to do, but for the first part is that. And then inside of A, we also have a class, and that's nav link inside of the anchor so let's do the nav link here and that's the same declaration up here nav and nav, nav dash item and nav dash link all right so now this will automatically show up here let's automatically show up properly they do add uh, an extra span with at the text so i'm going to delete that just to make sure we keep it as clean as possible We'll have some other tweaks to make, but let's just see how this comes out. So we apply, we come back home, we refresh, and now it looks different, right? It's catching on some of the characteristics anyway. It's not perfect yet, but it is catching on some of the characteristics. So we're just going to continue to tweak it to try to make it look like we need it to look. So let's do a couple things here. So first, let's figure out with the with the unordered list uh, up here. Look at the original. The original unordered list, of course, is just what we have here. But in the event that we have a drop down list, in other words, it shows up underneath one of the uh, this is an unordered list underneath an existing list. The class changes to just drop down menu. So we need to account for that here. So this is a little bit of Smarty code that does not come built in, but we're gonna. Uh, add it here anyway, and we're going to add a little bit of code here. So with Smarty code, so if the depth of these items is greater than zero, the depth of the unordered list is greater than zero, which means that it's deep, then we want this new this drop-down menu. All right. So if the depth of the drop-down menu is at is not the first one, then we want there but if it is then we want it to stick to the first one that it was, that was the original one so what's going to happen is going to read through here and it's going to say if this is the second item or the third item down use this ul if it's the first item down if it's not the second or the third it's the first it's zero then this is the one that we want to use so let's see how that works that makes any difference probably make some but i won't finish it off yet we well, can't really see the difference there just yet. All right, but let's see what other difference we have here. All right, 
So when we have the first item that just shows up as nav item, nav link, that works fine. But what we need to have happen is if there's a drop down, we need to change the li. And the li goes from just saying nav item to nav item submenu drop down. So what we're looking for here is if this node, if this particular item has as children, then you want to add to the li. And the li we're adding here is submenu drop down. And then we're going to do the same thing with the anchor class. But the anchor class goes from nav link to all of this extra stuff here. So I'm going to copy that. And then these will just stay active instead of menu active. All right, so we're going to continue to make these tweaks. Let's test it again. Refresh. And bam. So here are all the main pages. We have home, uh, how CMS, CMS works, default templates explained, default extensions. And if we go to the site here, these are the main pages that we have. How CMS CMS works, default templates explain, and default extensions. And then when we mouse over the ones with drop downs, and the drop downs show. So this is now fully functioning and fully working. The only problem is these aren't the pages that we want. So let's change the pages a little bit. We're going to select all. We're not going to select the home page. And we're going to do what we're going to do with them is we're going to delete them. So we're going to delete every single page here. And now the only thing we have left is a home page. So when we click on home again, the top navigation bar disappears. Let's set up some pages that we want. We're going to start out by doing an Ipsum. We'll just grab a few three Ipsum paragraphs. And then we're going to add a few pages here. So we'll start out with About Us. And we'll add those pages there. Let's make sure that the, oh, we have the home. We need to change this domain here instead of home. So we'll submit. We're going to then go back real quick to the design manager. And we're going to make sure that the main is the default page, is the default template, meaning that anytime someone creates a new page, it's going to by default be main instead of default being something else. So we're including about us. Uh, we'll do, this is an organization, so what programs does the organization have? And then the organization also have a blog. We'll enter that later. And then we'll have a contact us page. Which we'll enter later. Uh, another thing we want to have is a event calendars page. So we're just creating these pages here. And then we'll do one more page. But this will be under two more pages. This will be under about. So this is to be the mission of the organization. But we don't want the mission of the organization to be at the top navigation bar. We want that to be underneath about us. So we'll put that under the parent about us. So we'll go to navigation and do about. And then we'll do the same thing with the next page, which is going to be staff. So who's on the team here? And we'll put that underneath about us as well. So these are the different pages that we just created. Now, when we're at the home page here, the problem is we only have this one page, but when we refresh, all the new pages show up. Show up properly and have the underlying pages. And when we click on one of them, then it automatically takes us to that page. So the navigation bar is up, it's running, and the whole site is fully functional. Obviously, we have some more tweaks and customizations to do, but this is the core of the site. So next, we'll move into customizing some of the pages and making sure that they work exactly the way that we want them to work.